Our next install is one of the smaller wind turbines. In this case, it will be pole mounted in a field with a local control box and inverter feeding to a barn about 120 metres away. The pole is to be mounted as close as possible to the field hedge, as this will place it at the top of a gentle hill, which will accelerate the wind speed towards the blades of the turbine. This particular tower uses a gin pole and guy ropes for final stability. This size of turbine can also be mounted to structures. A popular use can be for boats, but remember that being pole mounted well away from buildings is the ideal scenario. Anchors are to be used, one in the centre, which will connect using a hinge bracket connection to the pole, and the others arranged at 90 degrees to each other, 3 metres from the centre pole. This means that a 6 metre diameter area is required to install this turbine. For this installation, simple ground anchors can be used. These use a slide hammer, which forces the anchor thread to screw into the ground. In this location, there are no underground services to be concerned about. When the anchors are installed, three guy rope fixing brackets, the central hinge bracket and the gin pole fixing bracket can be installed. A small amount of medium strength lock is used on all bolts to prevent the fixings loosening over time. However, it's important not to over tighten the main hinge bracket, as this needs to allow the pole to move. The central hinge bracket and the gin pole fixing bracket must also line up so the gin pole will slide into position when the tower is raised. During the pole construction, it is necessary to fish the cable which will carry power from the turbine through the pole. This particular system uses four standard scaffold poles, three for the central pole and one for the gin pole. When the first two parts of the main pole are assembled, the guy ropes can be attached. There are actually eight guy ropes in total, four connected to the connection between bottom and middle poles and four to the top of the middle pole. Six of these connect to the guy rope brackets and two to the end of the gin pole. Each guy rope connects to an assembly which allows the tension of the ropes to be adjusted. Once these have been connected, a trial lift is made of the assembly without the final pole or turbine in place. This keeps the weight and health and safety risks to a minimum during final adjustments of the guy ropes. It is very important that the pole is level, and this is achieved by using a spirit level and adjusting the guy tension on the appropriate side. Once level, the tower can be lowered to allow the final pole piece and turbine to be installed. Before the tower is lifted, the control panel must be installed and the cables from the turbine connected. This is to ensure that the default no power safe mode is activated, where electrical contactors naturally short the connections of the turbine together, meaning that any rotation of the turbine will cause an equal and opposite electromagnetic force opposing any turn, so causing a natural braking effect. When the turbine is connected, the tower can be raised. With the additional weight of the turbine and third pole, this is a three-man job. For some sites, it's possible to install a winch to make the task even easier. While the turbine installation has been going on, an electrician has undertaken the installation of necessary equipment to connect the output of the inverter to the electrical installation within the barn. Currently, wind turbines have no specific mention within the wiring regulations. However, we can look to the part on special installations, in particular the requirements for photovoltaic installations, for some guidance. As with PV, there are two sources of energy, although in this case they are both AC in nature. Two means of disconnecting the supply are therefore considered best practice. The cable feeding from the isolator connects to a 10 amp circuit breaker within this consumer unit. As the more experienced of you out there may know, sometimes connecting new electrical installation work to an existing installation often causes difficulties. 
especially if you spot something with the existing insulation that means it's unsafe. The best advice is, of course, to really identify this at the earliest survey stage of the project and advise the client of the concern. In no way should you continue with the work if a dangerous condition remains or can arise. The Electrical Safety Council's website is a good source of best practice guides for this kind of work. Before going live, the electrician undertakes the necessary inspection and testing. This will include an R1 plus R2 continuity test and insulation resistance tests. For certification purposes, as this is the provision of a new circuit, an electrical installation certificate will be used with the scope of work specifically described provision of wind generation circuit and control equipment including cabling, isolation and protective devices.